What's up everybody? This is Lenny Kaiser. I'm up on the roof here at my studio in San Francisco because it's a beautiful day out. We all want to get outside, but we all want to make some music at the same time. So today I'm going to be showing you five essential Macs for Live devices in less than five minutes. So the thing to know about the LFO is that it doesn't generate any sound itself and it doesn't directly affect any sound itself. We use an LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, to modulate and change parameters on other devices. In this case, I'm going to use the Auto Filter. From here, I'm going to select Map. It'll start to blink, and this is now where I can select any parameter on any device that I want. Click there on the cutoff frequency, and it's going to start modulating and changing that filter. A couple of key parameters to play with when using this are adjusting the rate, or how fast it's going to be modulating, the depth control, and the offset, which is going to change the start position in this case, that is the cutoff frequency. The pitch drop effect acts similar to a turntable tape stop effect, so we can put it on any track, hit the activate drop button and it's going to simulate a turntable slowing down and dropping in pitch. The drop duration controls how long that tape stop effect is going to last. So right now it's on one quarter note. We could change that to one bar. So what the envelope follower is going to allow us to do is track amplitude envelope information, or essentially how loud a signal is getting. So we're going to be able to use this information to then modulate and change a parameter on another device. When I hit play, we'll see the amplitude information show up here on the envelope follower. In this example, I'm going to add a reverb. Select map. Again, it's going to blink. Now I can map this to any parameter, so I'm going to click the dry wet value. So now any changes in volume are going to result in changes in more reverb being applied via the dry wet control there. We can also change the minimum and maximum values that it's using here. So if we wanted to start out with a little more reverb, we can set that here. Okay, so now let's talk about device number four, which is the Convolution Reverb Pro. So Convolution Reverb is digitally simulating an actual acoustic space. So the way that this is done is through taking a recording of that space, which is then generated and turned into what is known as an impulse response, which is used inside of the Convolution Reverb to generate and simulate that space. So essentially, take a recording, generate an impulse response, and then we see that impulse response down here in the Convolution Reverb Pro, so we can mimic and simulate how sounds function in that space. So a couple of cool controls about the Convolution Reverb Pro. I can change the positioning of the reverb from left, center, right, and front to back. There's also an EQ section on the Convolution Reverb Pro. Under the shaping section, here's another cool tip. There's a reverse function, so we can create a reverse reverb. The last device that I'm going to show you is the Max for Live Multimap. What this device is going to allow you to do is to map multiple parameters across any track in your session to one knob. For example, we could map all of our sends to one knob. So the way that I'm going to do that is by selecting map and then choosing the parameter that I want to map to it. Now that I've mapped all of my sends to the multi-map, this one knob here will control all of those sends. So there you have it. There's five Macs for Live devices in under five minutes. I hope you enjoyed this and see you next time. Music